Good morning viewers. This is my presentation about my project for DSA 5303 Financial Engineering Analytics. I'm Abhilash Ramesh and my project is the comparison of the accuracy of returns between the capital asset pricing model and the Pharma French three-factor model. I hope you find this presentation informative and enjoy. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Moving on. We look at the glossary which tells us about the topics we are going to be covering in this presentation. Let us start off with an introduction to stock market in general. Although formal trading started off in the 1900s, the Dutch were the pioneers in trading by initializing the transfer of ownership by issuing paper shares to diversify the ownership of the Dutch East India Company in 1600s. Coming back to 1900s, up until 1929, trading had been really used as a gambling method where people placed bets on stocks that were having a boom or profit for a day or two and reap the profits thereon. It was not until the Great Depression that economics thought that people really needed to look into investing in a smarter way. Although this idea of a smart investment was initiated, it did not start heading in the preferred direction until 1952 when Harry Markowitz published his paper Portfolio Selection in the Journal of Finance, sparking the beginning of the modern portfolio theory. After 1960, four researchers, namely Jack Trainer, William F. Sharp, John Lintner, and Jack Mosin stepped in to collectively give birth to the capital asset pricing model. With their contribution, this topic until this day is considered as the benchmark for portfolio optimization. The formula for returns in terms of a capital asset pricing model is given in the following slide. The formula states that the expected return of a portfolio R is the sum of the risk-free rate, the product of the difference between the market value of the stock and the risk-free rate multiplied by the beta value or volatility and a rate of return that exceeds the model prediction or alpha. Now, after years of success using the CAPM, investors thought that the CAPM was really the benchmark in terms of portfolio optimization. But two researchers, Kenneth French and Eugene Pharma, hypothesized that the performance of small cap stocks needed to be taken into consideration as they outperformed large cap or even value stocks. This idea saw the growth of the Pharma, fact, Pharma French three-factor model, which took into consideration the size and the value premium into the CAPM equation. Now, as you can see, we have provided you with a brief introduction of the model used in the project. Let us move on to the choices of stock index and the stocks chosen for this project. Okay, for our project, we are looking at an investor who is interested in making money by investing smartly into, into industries with a good future scope. For this purpose, we chose an index that contains not only large cap stocks, but is also easier to find small cap stocks. NASDAQ is the first electronic stock exchange in the world and it, ha it has the advantage of a lower listing requirement. Now, the advantages of investing in NASDAQ are as follows. One is that the trading is done electronically, meaning that there is minimum chance of execution delay and minimal chance of error because there are no humans involved and thus less human error. The other, the other advantage is that due to the lower listing price, it has the benefit of a huge choice of small cap and micro cap industries or stocks to enter into the listing and thus gives us much more um, choices to be choosing from. With all these advantages, I feel Nasdaq is a very good choice for a stock index to start off with. To create a balanced profile, we are going to be selecting six stocks with equal priority to large and small cap stocks. After ex extensive market research and study of trending industries, we have chosen the following stocks to be included in our portfolio. Microsoft Corp, Amazon.com, Apple, Axel Arx Pharmaceuticals, Ultra Industrial Motor Motion Corp, and Cat Trust REIT. All the stocks are downloaded from the Yahoo Finance website for a period of five years. 
the five year period is chosen as we are looking at monthly data for optimal results. Start calculating our beta value for justifying the choice of stocks, we would calculate our returns using the logarithmic formula. So the choice of logarithmic formula returns is due to the choice of performance measure in which the tool for performance measure for which we have chosen regression as our tool. The reason for choosing logarithmic returns is because it makes the returns, the calculated returns easier to be fit into the regression model, thus making it an ideal choice for our analysis. After we calculate the um, returns, the logarithmic returns, we implement these in the formula for the calculation of our beta. So the form formula for beta involves calculating the variance and the covariance, which is obtained from the returns that we had derived using the logarithmic return function. Now the beta is defined as the ratio between the covariance um, between the stock T and the stock index divided by the um, variance of the return of the market. Um, this this um, beta is very much responsible for telling us if a market um, st a stock in a market is volatile or not, depending on the movement, de depending on the stock uh, movement related to the um, movement uh, of the stock index. Now, if we see the choice of stocks, um, the be the beta value is given on screen um, here. And we see that Microsoft has a beta value of 0.443, which is not bad, considering that anything above a beta value of 1 is considered as volatile. Being 0.44 as the highest value for a large cap stock, we, can fe we feel that our portfolio is much more stable than um, expected. We look at the following parameters to evaluate the performance of a model. Alpha, which is the measure of excess return, the p-value for looking at the probability of the alpha value to be seen in the equation, and the r-square value to understand the amount of variance predicted by the regression model. From the values, we see that the alpha value are lower for the farmer French models, but the p-value appears to be higher, meaning an assurance for the alpha value to be seen in this model. Higher assurance, actually, yes. The R-square value also appears to have increased, meaning a better explanation of the variance within the data and fitting it into the model. Now that we have compared the models using Excel, I made an effort to obtain the optimal weightage required to create the optimal portfolio using RStudio. I studied the information given in the source page, given the link below, um, to optimize our portfolio of stocks. We use the portfolio analytics package to perform the optimization to obtain the optimal weights along with the efficient frontier graph. We implement real-time stock data using the QuantMod package and perform the portfolio optimization for the portfolio. After doing all the analysis and the required um, data imputation, we are provided with the weights that are given for the stocks below. We introduced constraints such as um, the increase in the mean returns and decrease in variance risk in terms of variance. And we also introduced um, a restricted ma maximum weightage to 80%, assuming that 20% of the amount will be invested in bonds and mutual funds to further display, display the overall risk. So in this slide, you can see the um, weightage percentage that has been calculated by our RStudio code. Sadly, we do not get the actual curve that is um, exhibited by the proposed efficient frontier graph, but we do get the distinct curve profile, meaning that our asset can be optimized for the maximum profit with minimal risk. We can see faint red dots on the um, top edge of the um, curve 
this is what we have found to be the efficient frontier if we are investing 80% of our investments into stocks. Um, as there are 50, 500,000 random portfolios in the graph, it is really hard to distinguish efficient, the efficient frontier from the random portfolios that are scattered. With this beautiful presentation in end, we have arrived at a few inferences and conclusions. The closing remarks are that the pharma flinch model is really seen to be better at explaining the variances of stocks as discussed in earlier literature or literature review that has been done. Um, the alpha value that has been obtained in pharma flinch, though small, is significantly better in terms of the p-value meaning that we would be definitely seeing such an alpha this can be attributed to the fact that the pharma flinch model separates the distortion cost due to the size size premium and the value premium um, effects of the uh, stocks in the portfolio this model helps us filter out these um, effects using the premiums and give us the actual alpha value in the second portion, we also saw how we could use um, our language and our studio as tools for data analysis. Now, the results which have been derived can be used in real time. Um, this is in terms of a future scope that I'm talking right now. We can use um, real time data and um, build our own portfolio, iterate and uh, look into, you know, different ways and in the end use our investments and earn real time profits. So this presentation is mainly for somebody who wants to understand what the basics of a, um, you know, understanding a model are, be it CAPM, be it the arbitrage pricing model, be it the pharma flinch model any the uh, basics of understanding any model are and then we also look at the possibility of um, understanding how our studio can be used as a real-time tool in um, obtaining real-time or um, use, useful um, output which can be used in um, real-time applications or investment Thank you everybody for listening to my presentation. I hope that you have um, benefited from this presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments box below. I will try to respond to them as soon as possible. Thank you very much.